I am a huge, huge fan of the Elecom Huge. It's freaking rad. It's almost, almost perfect. It has everything trackball users, I think, have wanted since the Microsoft TrackMan, which is a relic. It is discontinued and goes for $150 on eBay now. Come to the dark side. It's a Japanese company. It's a Japanese product. It just has one problem. Now, this is not true on every unit, but a significant number of the negative reviews, aside from the ones that talk about it being too big, even though it's called the huge, the main reason they're complaining and have negative reviews on it is that the motion of the ball itself, arguably the most important thing, is sticky and puts up a lot of resistance. The reason for that is that Elecom used artificial ruby, which is not bad. It should be really good. It should be comparable to sapphire screens on an HTC device, but it's not because the artificial ruby bearings are not perfectly spherical. Now, I have no doubt if they were made to be perfectly spherical, they'd last the test of time, but they simply don't. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to downgrade them to regular old 2.5 millimeter ceramics. Now, I use the term downgrade very loosely because there's no application of this, no matter how many years you're going to use this device, that ceramic isn't going to hold up the test of time. But if you ever need to, they are fairly easy to replace. I'm going to make this as short and sweet as I can, but there are a few things you need to address first. Without a doubt, the most important point I can address is that you get more than you need. It takes three, but they are so easy to lose. They'll just fly, drop, and ceramic, as well as ruby, and any other bearing this small is going to bounce. During my last video, I lost some of the bearings I was using, and it was infuriating. I had to wait two more weeks to get another set of bearings I could use for this video, because nobody has this on Prime. The closest thing I could find on Amazon that would arrive in a reasonable amount of time, under two weeks, were 3 30 seconds of an inch. Now, the difference between that and 2.5 millimeters is super small. It's 0 0.18 millimeters. But, as well as it worked in my first Elecom, it did not hold for my second. The bearings didn't stay in the cup. They were too small. So, I wouldn't roll the dice on this one. Just wait the extra week and get the 2.5s from eBay. I've thrown a link in. No guarantees if they're still going to be available. Uh, if you're going to look for your own, just remember they're not on Prime. Unfortunately. You might see some discrepancies on what is available. Both being 2.5, but you'll see white bearings like this, or you'll see shiny gray bearings uh, that it's a different composition. I'll put a chart up. They're not all that different. Um, the darker gray are a little bit more expensive, and they stand up to heat better. And I think they're lighter weight, but when you're dealing with something this small in a stationary trackball, I don't think you have to worry about it. It doesn't matter that much. Go with the white ones if they're available. They will be cheaper. If you find gray ones that are cheaper, go with them. Just remember, 2.5 millimeters is the deciding factor. Other than that, grade doesn't matter that much either. As long as they're 5 or above, you're fine. Uh, if you're wondering what grade describes, it's how spherical the balls are. So, uh, before you start any of this, you'll want a clean surface. Um, deal with it. Next off, you'll want to put some tape down to hold your screws, unless you have a magnetic tray. I'm going to do one like this, right here, right here. And I'm just going to hold it down at the ends with two other pieces of tape. So I'm laying down some tape at the end of my desk to make sure that if the bearings do come the hell loose, which they do, flashbacks, that they'll be maybe caught. The Elecom comes with a back hole that's meant specifically to push out the ball and for any debris to fall through. It's important. I'm glad they included it. It's a nice feature. Next up, the battery door also has to come out. 
my dollar store batteries because I am balling in that non-existent YouTube money. So first thing, oh, wrong side, sorry. You can just pull them back and that should be fine. Some of them are Torx, but if you have a decent enough Phillips, it'll work just fine. That is a really lazy way to do it, considering I have a full Torx set in the other room, and I'm just not getting it. Oh, don't forget the dongle. Um, I am doing a little bit of YouTube magic, as I said before, I've already done this. And it turned out horribly, because one of the bearings fell out, and I had to put a ruby back in. And I cannot stress to you how bad these ruby bearings are. There's one. It's in line with the battery tray. It's been a couple of weeks, because these are not available on Prime or any kind of expedited shipping whatsoever. You just have to roll the dice with eBay and see when you get them. Mine was about two weeks later than I had originally rolled this video for, which um, sucks. That's why I'm drunk during this take. Alright, so the screws come out. Because in order to do that, we need to expose the cup, the entirety of the cup. And that. Here's another one. There's that. And I believe there's some on the bottom down here as well. There we go. Keeping it in frame. Speeding this way up because I needed a Torx bit after all. And I ran downstairs to get one. I didn't have one there either. I'm gonna have to see if it'll work with a lot of pressure and a Phillips. Which it seems like it is. Success. Next things. The inside cup screws. The cup is pretty handy in this case. It'll catch the screws that I am too lazy to properly remove. And they're left conveniently there. Now these are the only two that aren't Torx, so set them aside. And to recap, your screw points are here, 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 and I believe there's just one of them on the top, which is right there. There's one more inside the battery tray. Do not forget it. Makes taking apart the Elecom rather difficult. And if you can tell by the way I said that, yes, I forgot it, and this is a cut. Thank you, YouTube Magic. Boop. All right. As far as getting this thing open, I recommend starting right here. Uh, if you don't have my magnificent guitar fingernails, a guitar pick will work just fine. Keep in mind that this is a separate piece. And there is a ribbon cable inside, so open slowly. To get it started, this should pop right up. If it doesn't, you may have forgotten the screw. Double check. And come down the other direction. Remember, there's a ribbon cable inside. The last bit is going to latch on the front. And just try very light pulls to get it to come apart here. Mind the ribbon cables inside. They're super... well, they're ribbon cables. They're not strong. There's a plastic connector right here. Some people remove them with blades. I disagree with that. I think you can grab on to the plastic on the upside much more easily. Right there. Comes off. This lifts. See it lifted? And then the cable slid right out. Good luck putting that back in, but that's how you take it out. Next one, down here. It's sort of wrapped around and twisted all funny because this piece is over here. Right, this comes right out. You don't even need to take it out, but I'm going to do it because I like to be complete. And you might have already done it, so I'll show you how to put it back. What the hell? The underside of the cup actually comes apart at this seam, but in order to get to it, you need to take this out. There's another one down here. This piece, with some doing, 
be very careful, it's just a silicon board, pops right off of these two pegs. Keep in mind where they are, you'll need to put it back in place. The cable is going to come out of this side. Underneath it is your lens, your crystal, your prism. And underneath that, you have the only three screws you ever needed to open. One. Two. And yes, they are the same size as the sensor screws. So you shouldn't have to worry that much. Just put all the silver ones together. So, don't open this yet. You probably already did. I should have said something earlier. Take some tape. This is important. But in order to keep from losing some of the rubies, if you need to back pedal, just put some tape over the ruby bearing. And it comes right the hell out. So uh, in order to do that more safely, put the tape over the ruby bearing on this side and that side. Just leave them there. Flip it over. Off with the cup. And you'll see that there are no bearings in it. It's kind of difficult to tell at first glance. But the bearings are still firmly in their cups. So we will set them aside. All right, see how it stays? It's just right there. It works so well. Scotch tape works a little better. There we go. Save your tape. Because putting them in is just as difficult. Here are the bearings I got. I will put an eBay link in the description. All right, now my preferred way of getting them out of here is to hold on to all but three with my thumb and my finger and to pour out the rest. That'll just get three. It's kind of slick. I'm proud of it. You're going to want to put them in this piece. This piece is easier to keep stationary. So first bearing out, just slide it into your little fingernail groove. Place it, oh, so gently. Right there. Uh, level tables don't exist in reality, so I don't have one. Pop that in. Now this is, uh, the orientation of this is important. I'm going to put it on this way. Remember where the sensor was? I'm going to have that facing the underside, the hand rest. Now you get uh, one shot to get this on right. You can see the cups are more pronounced here. It's just way easier to put them on this side. Line up this peg with this hole first. And then set the rest down. Keep pressure on it. Put your thumb in the hole and keep pressure. You're going to flip it over. And these bearings here, reapply the tape. Losing them at this point is a super pain in the ass because then you have to order more. And none of them are prime. There's that, there's that, there's that. I'm going to pick up our silver screws. Remember, these three have to go on first. Next up, you need to reassemble the lens. It's not that tough to see. You'll notice that it doesn't snap in, but it does fit firmly once it's in. You see the wedge is facing that way. Next up, you'll just place the sensor over, and remember the cable came out of this other side, and there are pegs to hold in place there and there. After that, two screws. One. Two. All right, as of this point, if you would like to, this is now secure enough for you to remove the tape and make sure that you did a good enough job. I recommend doing this now before you get to the end of the reassembly. And since the screws are all in rather securely, as I'm double checking them, you can go ahead and test the action of the ball. And it's not very noisy. 
it's super quiet and super smooth there is no catch at all I can just move my fingers however little I would like to there's no catch it's almost like a Kensington expert at this point it's much much better all right pop it back out remember there are two screws in the cup you remember this piece we're gonna start building it from the bottom up and you remember this piece this ribbon cable has to stretch awkwardly all the way to this connector first things first flip up the connector it should slide in a decent amount it should go up and under and uh, a handy way to tell if you've done it properly is there should be just as much on this end as over here it should be level there are two more cables to slot in on the top again blue side up it might be orange but you can tell because the copper exposed on the bottom well should be on the bottom it's gonna slide in I'm gonna get my head in the light just so I can make sure I'm doing it right and there you go this one at least on my particular production uh, should be almost completely covered and secure last one is this switch connector right here so I'm gonna move this over and slide the ribbon cable underneath the switch connector like that give myself a little more clearance and to keep this ribbon cable out of the area of the ball I don't want the socket to come down and crush this very thin very flimsy ribbon cable this should place and you'll see it sort of punches up a little bit don't worry about it it'll go down and it's sort of meant to fold and we should be clicked now you remember the interior screws were Phillips and in they go shout out to Jerry rig everything for giving everybody the balls to do this kind of thing second one in and as of this point you can test this device put batteries in it power it the hell up and see if it works uh, I'm fairly confident in my own work but I would definitely advise you to test it at this point because there's very minimal uh, disassembly required to get it back open if you messed something up if you forgot one of those little tiny ribbon wires All right, screwing complete. As I say every time I finish love making, put the damn ball inside. Feel that beautiful, beautiful motion. Throw some batteries back in it. If you have any leftover screws, if they're silver, they went inside. If they are black and Phillips head, they went inside the cup. If they're black and Torx, they went either here uh, maybe it was over there. Uh, here, 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 or inside the battery. One and done. A beautiful, fully functional, as intended, Elecom motherfucking huge. That was embarrassing. Uh, this tape just stuck to my fucking hair. Fuck my life. All right.